All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Chapter 1, Microsoft Word, and we're going to learn just the basics. If you do not know how to start Microsoft Word or launch it, which I hope you do, but for anybody that's a 1 or a 0, there's a couple different ways. First way is we can come down here to the Start button. We can click on that. You can go looking for it under All Programs, but I really recommend you just type in on the search bar right here, Word. And it will pop up, as you can see here on the screen. Ding, ding. It's right here. Just click on it. Once Microsoft Word loads, you should have a blank page that comes up exactly like this. I might need to zoom out just a little bit because you guys are probably more like that. That's probably what you see. So we've got this one. Now, what I really recommend if you have not done this already that you do is you right mouse click on Microsoft Word. <coughs> Down here, there's a little W. And there should be a little thing that says pin. It should be the second feature up pin to the taskbar. If you do that, you don't have to keep going into your start menu to find it. Word will always be down at the bottom of the screen and we're going to use it a lot in college, so I think that's a good thing to do. So starting off today, we are going to learn how to make a flyer because Bailey, the dog, has gone missing and we want to know how to format these things. So we're going to do a little bit of text, a little bit of formatting, and a lot of this is going to happen. All right. So when we start with a basic thing, I like to start off with a simple principle. All right, and this is something that everybody needs to understand. Has, does anybody remember their college or their high school or college class that they took on computers? Everybody take that? Took yeah. computers. Then you've got to remember the term. I'm sure you remember this. If you don't, you're shot. Gigo. Anybody remember Gigo? No. Come on, Jonathan. You know what that is? Something in, something out. I forgot what the G is. Oh, good job, Jay. Thank you. Garbage in, garbage out. Uh, and I think this is a really important principle when we start thinking about Microsoft Office because a lot of people think the computer is intentionally trying to make me mad and it's not <laughs> I know Jen thinks it is but it's not what the computer is doing is it's it's dumb it doesn't know anything it can't anticipate anything but a programmer has sat down and said if you do this the computer will do this back to you so before we start getting frustrated at the computer, we just need to realize, hey, I just need to learn the language that the computer wants me to talk to it as, and it's much easier to deal with after that. So one of the things I like to point out right off the bat is that there's this little button up here. It has a little paragraph right here, if everybody sees it. And that paragraph, when we click on it, we'll just get that same little symbol down here. What this does is it shows us what the computer sees. So every key we press, will have an effect on what the computer sees. And so sometimes when you're typing and all of a sudden it keeps skipping, like you're trying to get these last two lines on a page and it keeps dropping them to the next page, you're like, dang you computer, why? It, it's just because the computer's got a command. Maybe you've hit enter three times and you didn't realize that that was there. So this shows us every time we see this paragraph symbol, that means we've pressed the enter key. We have a new line, okay? Every time in Word that we press the Enter key, it's a new paragraph, not a new sentence. So this is a good term that you need to understand. The computer interprets the Enter key as a new paragraph, not as a new sentence. Very important. Okay. So let's go ahead and start by typing out some basic text. I'm going to be on starting on page 6 on our book if you want to follow along with me. We're on that red number 1. And the first thing we're going to type is just found dog. Page six, page six on the blue word section yeah chapter one now when I hit the space bar if you guys can all see up here right in this little section there's a dot in the middle of found and dog it's right in the middle in between you know what usually works out well when we have double desks is one book in between both people that's usually the best way to do it sorry <coughs> that way you have space and you can both flip we're on page six yeah and so, once we've typed in found dog, we're going to see this little dot up here. And this dot is just showing us every symbol, every time we hit a space, notice there's a, uh, like a period in the middle. So we can see if there's spaces happening. I'm going to go ahead and delete those. I just wanted to show you that that's there. And I'm going to hit enter. And you can see as soon as I hit enter, I have a new line. It's dropped me down. I'm actually going to put one more blank line in there so we have a, like a space in between our two lines. And let's talk about a thing called word wrap. Now, when I was in high school, 
way back in the day when I was a boy, we actually took typing on typewriters. <laughs> so when we would get to the end of a line, we would go ding, and you'd hit enter, and you had a certain amount of time. You'd hear the ding, and it meant you have like 10 characters to go, so you better not be typing supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, or you're going to run out of space. So you, you knew as soon as you heard the ding, the next time you hit space bar, you should probably also hit the return key with your pinky. Fortunately, today, and with modern technology, we have this wonderful thing in Microsoft Word called Word Wrap. So if we all start typing what's on page eight, this is an adorable, loving, friendly, well-behaved dog found early Friday morning, <coughs> June 1st, wandering on the bike. Notice I get to bike, and as I type in trail, it jumps to the next line automatically. When we do this, this is called word wrap. Okay, at I didn't have to hit enter; it just did it on its own. Filter Park in Hampton Township. Period. Okay, so we can see these things, and we can see that as I did this, it automatically did it on its own. So we can just type constantly. Now, the important part of this is to realize that. This is why Word thinks every time we hit the enter key, we're starting a new paragraph. Okay? It's because it will automatically take care of these things as we go. So everybody, as you get to that point, just like give me a head nod if you're done so I know if we're all getting close. Now this is my time. I usually tell everybody, if you're not a fast typer, it's probably about time you looked into a typing tutor program because you're in college, you're gonna type a lot, and especially tomorrow when we get into research papers, you're going to start realizing, man, I should probably be quicker at this. You just didn't know what? <laughs> okay, so here we go. We're on to our next line here. We hit enter, and on page nine, it tells us we're going to type in tan color with, and we're going to purposely misspell patches, P A C H E S. And then you're going to hit space and leave it just like that tan color with patches. Now one of the things I love about Microsoft Office is that it helps us help ourselves. So in one of my last classes with a student that is pretty far along, they <laughs> this person turned in a paper that had some squiggly lines in it in the Word document. And I said, wow, that's really insulting to Microsoft Word and to me. <laughs> because words already telling you a red squiggly line means what? Does anybody know? It's spelling. 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 Green means grammar. grammar. Blue means it could be something like it's. Like if you type in it's, it's not sure if that's the correct version of it's. So a blue squiggly line doesn't always have to be corrected. But we should at least look at it. Now when we see this little line right here, this red line, if we want the computer to help us out with it, what we can do is we can right mouse click it our magic mouse button that I've told you about, the right mouse click. And up at the top, we see that there's a bunch of different guesses. The computer's saying, well, I'm guessing you were either trying to do pat paces, patches, peaches, poaches, or parches. Of course, we were trying to say patches. We don't need no stinking patches. So we're going to click on that one, and it automatically corrects it. <coughs> I love it. Okay, If you see a red squiggly line, just right mouse click it. 90% of the time, it's going to guess pretty close, as long as you weren't like typing in flubber and you were trying to type in you know Tunisia it's gonna guess it <laughs> if you're typing in something completely wrong it'll totally miss it but it's pretty good at getting pretty darn close so we have tan color with patches and we've done our right mouse click that's great so we're gonna go ahead and enter in some more text we're gonna hit enter and we're gonna just keep going here oh I'm sorry I'm gonna hit backspace and say pan ta uh, tan color with patches of white on his chest. This is all on page 11. Enter male, adult, cocker, spaniel. Enter green silver collar with the name Bailey on the tag. Enter. If this is your lost dog, call 555-1029 period. 